welcome once again to the Life of Excellence. This is Jay Hurt, Senior Lead Minister of New Life 313 Ministries. We're honored to be with you today. And however you may be listening to us, whether you're listening to us right there at newlife313.life, that's newlife313.life, or um, at a later date in the archives, or maybe you have a CD or a DVD, or you're listening at our podcast, or uh, YouTube, or Rumble, uh, or Twitter, <clears throat> however you're listening to it, thank you for having this in your life. And if you're listening to it uh, live there at newlife313.life, thank you for being a part of this uh, programming. We, we do appreciate it so much, and we love and appreciate you for taking the time. Someone said, well, why don't you do Facebook? I have Facebook on my phone. Well, you can download the New Life 313 uh, Life, uh, New Life 313.life uh, uh, <clears throat> website right onto your phone. There's a little uh, icon in that Apple download, and you can just click on and uh, and be a part of the programming. We don't do uh, Facebook because we've been put into Facebook jail uh, uh, too many times. And so we got paroled, so we decided we weren't going back. But um, we're just happy. We do Facebook when we're at churches because, and in fact, I've been responsible for some of the churches being put into Facebook jail. Because, you know, <clears throat> Facebook, they, they don't like what we say, so I don't care. I'm going to preach the Word of God. And that's why we do it right here at newlife313.life or through our DVDs or our CDs. And, and we just want you to be blessed by it, however you listen to it. And if you are a part of the newlife313.life uh, family members, thank you for being a part of it and what God is doing here. We hope and pray that it will bless you and encourage you and, and that you'll be uplifted. You know, we have what we call our hero partners. These hero partners, they stand with us every single month. They stand with us in uh, their support, their financial support, their prayers, and their encouragement. And, and that's what keeps us going forth producing this content is because of them and because of people like you who tune in. Now, you may just be a friend of the ministry. That might mean that you come across our website periodically or you attend the revival services when we're in your area. We thank you. You mean a lot to us. We can't do this without God's people, and we thank you. But today, I, I want to talk to you about three prayers of John 17. Now, I don't know if I'll get through the whole uh, segment of it, but if not, we'll continue it, and, and, and we'll go on in another time. But today, I want to talk to you about these. But before we get into it, would you do me a favor? Would you raise your Bible, your phone, or your iPad, or may, maybe you're just at work. Just repeat it in your heart. This is my Bible. I am what it says that I am. I will do what it says I can do. I will be what it says I can be. I will have what it says I can have. And I will apply it to my life. And, and, and I'm just so thankful that you're with us. Before we get into this, I want to tell you about our new book. It's uh, I Am the God That Heals Thee. This powerful book will strengthen you and encourage you. There's, uh, I believe, 52 pages in this book, 56 pages, and these books will bless you. Now, we don't write novels. We don't write these 300-page books and, and, and because we want you to read it, get it into your spirit, and, and be blessed by it. You can go to newlife313.life, and if you're dealing with sickness, if you're dealing with physical sickness or maybe you're dealing with depression or oppression or mental uh, attacks i am the god that heals thee will bless you you can go to newlife313.life it's available on amazon.com barnesandnoble.com and many other outlets so i know you can be blessed by this go to it and 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 if you want to write to us today you can write to us uh, here in tulsa oklahoma go to our website our address is on there and send us a letter and, and, and for whatever donation you want to give, we'll send this to you. Now, it takes money for us to produce these and write these and hours for me to write them. But you know what? Whatever God speaks to your heart, and, and I'll send this to you. Just, re, just put in there in your writing, I want, I am the God that heals thee. And here's my offering for whatever amount. And we'll send it to you. We'll even pay the postage. We just want you to have it in your life. And I know it will be blessed. John 17 is a powerful chapter. Now, if you've never re read through it, you need to read it. it. It will encourage you and bless you. It will uplift you. It will, it will strengthen you. It will give you hope and assurance. 
It is a, 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 a detailed history of what Jesus prayed the moment before he was betrayed in the Garden of Eden. And he prayed in the Garden of Eden, in the, in the Garden of Gethsemane. He was in the Garden of Eden too, people. He was there from the beginning because all things were created by him and through him were all things created. <clears throat> but I didn't mean to say that. But <clears throat> maybe that's just a, a slip. Maybe somebody needs to know that God, the very thing that God spoke in the Garden of Eden, that we have dominion. Maybe you needed to hear that. Boy, that was a good spin on that one, wasn't it? Okay, but in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus is praying. Oh, he's praying. In fact, the Bible describes that he prayed so much that his, his sweat was as great drops of blood. In fact, science, if you believe science, science says that your body can perspire blood. Jesus is there. He has his disciples with him. And the four Gospels list this prayer. And, 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 and one, he, he says, let's go pray. He leaves them. He says, I'm going to go over there and pray. While he's praying, while he's in agony, and he comes back, and they're asleep. And he says to the disciples that are with him there, he says, can you not pray? Watch and pray. And oh, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, we'll pray. So he goes off and prays again. And he comes back, and they're asleep again. He said, can you not just pray one hour? Just one hour. Just pray with me. You ain't doing nothing else out here. Just pray with me. Then he goes off, and of course, you know, he comes back in their sleep, but, and, and then he's betrayed. But I want you to see what Jesus was dealing with. Jesus went to pray, and he went away from everyone else to pray. And I'm, I'm going to encourage you. You need to at least pray. Just focus on prayer at least 10 minutes a day. And before you know it, you'll, you'll have 10, then you'll have 15, then you'll have 20, then you'll have an hour. And, and before you know it, it'll, it'll, it'll pass by. Prayer. Hallelujah is powerful. And if you, you if you have the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues, yeah, I said the Holy Ghost, hallelujah. I didn't say Holy Spirit. I said Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking in tongues. Glory to God. Pray in the Spirit. The Word of God says, I pray in the Spirit and I understand in the Spirit. And see, you, you say, I don't have time to pray. I got to take the kids to school. I got to take the, a drive to work. <clears throat> pray on your way to work. Pray on your way before you pick the kids up from school. You, there's time to pray. And you can turn that news off. You can turn that radio off. I'm talking to somebody today. Hallelujah. You can turn that news off. You can turn that radio off. And you can begin to pray. You can begin to speak to God. You say, I don't know how to pray. Pray in the Spirit if you have the Holy Ghost. Just pray in tongues. And you say, well, I don't I have to have the unction? If it's in there, it should just come right on out. That's a whole nother lesson. But anyways, I got off on that soapbox there. But let's go to John 17, verse 1. Jesus spoke these words, and he lifted up his eyes to heaven. I love that. Jesus, glory to God, took a moment, and he lifted his eyes to heaven. He didn't look down. Now, notice, he said, watch and pray. See, watch and pray. Sometimes you've got to keep your eyes open. See, that's why some people say, well, I can't pray in the car because I can't concentrate because I'm watching everything going on around. Jesus did. He lifted his eyes up to heaven and he began to pray. And, <clears throat> and he said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that your son also may glorify you. And as you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, yeah, woo, whom you have sent. He said, I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. And now, O oh Father, glorify me together with yourself with the glory of Oh, I love this, which I had with you before the world was. Jesus is praying, and he says, Father, I want that glory back. I've been down here 33 years. I want that glory back. I want to feel that glory. Get, glorify me now, even with the glory that I had before the world was. And see, Jesus prayed, and he said right here, he said, that I have been given the authority 
over all flesh. Jesus said in, in, in Matthew, he said, all authority has been given unto me, and behold, I give unto you power to tread up on serpents and scorpions. Let me give you a, 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 an example of the kind of authority Jesus had. Look what it says right here in the book of Ephesians. It says this, and in, in, in the book of Ephesians, it says, hallelujah, let me get this here, hallelujah, uh, right here, <clears throat> that he said, therefore, uh, uh, verse, uh, chapter 1, verse 15, he said, therefore, also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in prayer. And then he went on down and he said in verse 21, he said, well, let me read in verse 20, which he worked in Christ. What did he work? The inheritance of of the power, the inheritance of the glory. And Paul is saying, I pray for you that your eyes of understanding will be enlightened. And then he said these words. He said, "Far he was far above all principalities and power and might and dominions and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And verse 22, and he put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. Paul said, I have prayed for you that your eyes of understanding will be enlightened, that you'll know who you're serving. Jesus was praying, Father, you gave me authority. Let me tell you again. He said, and you have given him authority over all flesh. Paul says he has power over all principalities, over things in the earth and above the earth. He has power and authority everywhere. And that's what Jesus gave you and I. He gave us that power and that authority. Jesus begins to pray. In these, these prayers of John 17, he begins to pray. And the first thing he prays is, Father, I cannot wait to be with you again. I cannot wait to, for the glory. Why was Jesus praying this way? Because he knew it was going to be hard. He knew it was going to be tough. In fact, the word of God says, hallelujah, in the gospels that Jesus prayed, Lord, if there's any other way, let this cup pass from me. But then he caught himself and he said, no, 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 Father, not my will, but thy will be done. Are you willing to pray that kind of prayer? Lord, whatever you want me to do, God, whatever you, God, lead me and I'll do it. God, I may not want to, but God, thy will be done. That's a powerful prayer. See, Jesus understood how the glory was. You know, have you ever met somebody and they relive their glory days? You know, uh, I, I knew someone and, 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 and uh, she, she, she knew this man. And this man had a, 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 a DVD from an old film that was put onto a VHS, put onto a DVD of his glory days, his football days. He, he, he was really celebrated, uh, I guess, at his high school. Not college, but high school. And man, he'd put that on and he'd watch himself run. He'd watch himself play. He lived in his glory days. No, never mind that, you know, he never did anything with his football. But he wanted to make sure that everybody knew that video and had that video because it was his glory days. He ran down the sideline and he made all these touchdowns. And he was quick and he was good. And he was living the glory days. He was getting the accolades. But all it was was a memory of the glory. But see, when you go to Matthew 17, you see that Jesus is transfigured on the mountain in front of Peter, James, and John. And Moses and Elijah show up and they minister to him. They talk to him. Jesus, whoa, step back into that glory. The word of God says when he rose from the dead, he was glorified. And he said, do not touch me. I have yet not ascended. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm here today to tell you that God will answer your prayer. If you just pray, God, I want your glory. I want your anointing. God, I want your power. God, I'm struggling right now, but God, not my will, thy will be done. That's what Jesus, oh, hallelujah. That's what Jesus prayed. Look what he said. I mean, Jesus had power and authority over all powers of the earth. But you know what? Instead of living in the glory days of gone by past, live in the glory of God today. I love what he said here. He said, <coughs> excuse me, 
He said, let me put my glasses back on. Hallelujah. He said, and this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. And then he said this, Father, I have glorified you on the earth, and I have finished the work which you have given me to do. And now, O oh Father, glorify me together with yourself. Now, notice what he says there. Glorify me together with yourself. With yourself. With the glory. In other words, Father, I don't want to just have glory. I don't want you to go, and, Woo, we're going to glory you because you're dying for me. No, Father, I want that glory back. That same glory. I don't want the different glory. I want that glory back that I had with you in heaven. I mean, imagine right here. I love this. He says that I had the glory with your, uh, uh, me together with yourself. Now, imagine what he's saying there. He's saying with yourself. Can you just reach out in your heart and your mind and say, God, I want that same glory. I want that same glory power. I want that same anointing. I want that same. I, 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 I want it just like it was with you. I, I want that power. See, the glory of God is powerful. The glory of God is real. The glory of God shines bright. In fact, so powerful and so bright that <clears throat> when God came down to talk with Moses on mountain, the trumpets sounded and thunder rolled and, and it burned. In fact, right now, they have found a mountain, and they believe that Mount Sinai is it, it, it may be in the Saudi Arabia area and not where they had originally thought because there is a mountain there, and that mountain has a burn on it. It's been burnt. It, it burn up, people. Uh-huh. It's burnt. And, and they're saying that has to be because God put his imprint on that mountain and it looks exactly like where somebody would sit and talk it was so powerful the people ran from the mountain the people said man i, I don't we don't want to hear his voice they could hear his voice like thunder trumpets and a cloud and fire oh glory to god that's what god oh see i just said glory to god that's where glory comes from when you glorify something, you honor it. You lift it up. And Jesus is saying, Father, I remember what that glory felt like. When you let Moses and Elijah come and talk to me on the Mount of Transfiguration, which we now call it, I, I remembered that glory. I, can you imagine? After all those years, he stepped into that glory again. He felt the Father's, hallelujah, touch surround him and hold him. Do you want to feel that? I do. Do you want to feel that type of glory? I do. Do you want to feel that type of anointing? I do. Do you want to feel that power and that grace and that mercy? I do. Oh, I don't want to relive my glory days. I want to live in the glory of God. I want to live in the power and the majesty of the Almighty. I want to live in that. I, and Jesus said, Father, give me back that glory. That, 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 and give it back to me, the, 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 the same glory with yourself, with the glory, and then this is key, which I had with you before the world was. Then he said this, I have manifested your name to the men whom you have given me out of this world. They were yours, but you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know, oh, now they have known that all things which you have given me are from you. I have given them the words which you have given me. What did Jesus say? Jesus said, I, I, I don't say anything except what the Father wants me to say. I, 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 I reveal to you what the Father wants me to reveal to you. I, I help you with what the Father wants me to help you with. And Jesus is like, even though he's in agony, his flesh knows how painful it's going to be because he's God in the flesh and he knows it's going to be painful. Jesus was raised around the Romans. He understood scourging. He understood uh, stood crucifixion. That's why the Bible says cursed is anyone who hangs on the tree because the word of God, it was a cursed thing. It was a horrible sight to behold. I, I'm going to just say I believe personally Jesus saw crucifixions. He saw the agony of it. 
And he must have thought, I'll be there in just a few days. I'll be there in a few years. I, 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 I'll be up there. I'll be suffering that. He knew what was coming. And so what was he wanting? I want to feel that glory. Why? Because the glory of God strengthens you. When you get into the glory of God and you're honoring God and you're praising God, it strengthens you. How do I know? Because the Bible says that Jesus prayed earnestly and the devil was attacking him in there, there in the garden. But then angels came and ministered to him. They brought a touch of the glory. Woo, glory to God. Now, see, the next time you say glory to God, understand what you're talking about. You're talking about his essence, his, his presence, his power, his, his strength, his, his anointing. He, he, the all in all, the I am that I am. He doesn't even have to have his name. He's got his name. I am that I am. We can call him Jehovah Jireh or Jehovah Tiskadu or uh, 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 any other uh, Jehovah uh, 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 Shalom, whatever we want to call him, but he is I am that I am. I don't need a name because I am all that I am. I, I, I'm, I'm the beginning and I'm the end. I know the end from the beginning. I, I woo, Man, I could preach on that. Glory to God. There, I said it again. Glory to God. Friend, Jesus prayed in, in that garden. There was three specific prayers that he prayed, and I, I don't think I'll have time to get into all. But the first one was he prayed for himself. He prayed for the glory of God to come back. He wasn't praying selfishly for himself. He was praying because he needed strength. Have you ever prayed that way? Have you knew somebody else that needed prayer and, and you, you started to pray for them, but then you begin to pray for yourself because you knew that you needed strength? You knew that you needed God to help you? You knew that you needed God to give you hope because you knew the journey was going to be long and hard and you knew that God was your only source. I've been there. I've prayed that prayer. Sometimes we need to just simply pray, God, I glorify you. I magnify you. Just a prayer of thanks. Lord, I thank you for what you've done, for what you're doing, and for what you're going to do. I thank you because you've answered me. I may not understand it, but God, give me that glory. In other words, give me your presence. Give me your essence. Give me your power and your strength and your mercy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel this in my spirit. And somebody's getting a hold of this today, and you're going to start praying differently. You're going to start believing differently. See, your words frame your world. I love that. Uh, uh, Connie says that your words frame your world. And did you know that your, your prayer is voice activated? Your faith is voice activated. Your heart uh, uh, desire is voice activated. If you go around talking about how God never speaks to you, God, and God never answers your prayer, guess what? You're going to be deaf to God's word. But when you say, God just spoke to me, every day you can open up his word. There, there, there are 66 books where God is speaking. Paul said to Timothy, all scripture is being given by divine inspiration. Excuse me, divine inspiration. Hallelujah. Friend, I want the glory of God in my life. Do you? I want the power of God in my life. Do you? I want to be able to pray for the sick and see them recovered. What about you? I, 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 I want to be able to know through my trial that God's glory is surrounding my life. What about you? Then get into your word. I don't have time to go into the other two prayers, but I will get to those other two prayers. But today I want you to understand if you're in a trial, Jesus was in a trial. If you're in a situation, Jesus was a call out to the Lord and say, God, I need your power. I need your glory. I need you, Lord, like I, I, I used to feel. That's what Jesus is saying. Give me that glory back that I had before the world was. I want to feel it again. I want to feel it again. Why? So I can tell people about you. So I can tell them how to keep themselves from this world. So I can tell them how to be saved and delivered and set free. But God, right now, your servant needs your glory. Jesus was saying, Father, I can't go to the cross without that anointing, without you being with me. I can't hang on that cross and be tortured without knowing that your glory is there. And then the angels came and ministered to him. Woo, hallelujah. Glory to God. There, I said it again. Praise God. I hope you were blessed by this teaching today. Our heart is to pour into you, not to talk at you, but to talk with you, to talk to you and to help you and, and encourage you. We don't have all the answers, but the Word of God does. And I hope it will bless you today. I, I, I want to pray for you. Dear Heavenly Father, all of those who are listening, by whatever means they're listening, 
I pray that God today they'll begin to be a people of prayer. They'll begin, God, to get a habit of praying and asking you for your glory. There are those that are struggling, they're battling, they're going through a battle and they don't understand. God, give them your glory, your presence. Lead them and guide them like the cloud that you led the people by day and the fire that you covered them to protect them from the elements at night. God bless them, prosper them, and strengthen them. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow, praise God. This was a good teaching. I, got, I liked it. I hope you did too. And once again, I thank you to all of our hero partners. Thank you for believing in this ministry. Thank you for sowing into this ministry. If you would like to become a hero partner, go to newlife313.life. That's newlife313.life. And, and, and just click on the donation button and put reoccurring and click on hero. And we'll know that you become a hero partner. And we'll add you to our daily prayer list. I carry a little flash drive with hero partners on it. And, 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 and I pray for heroes every day. In fact, me and Connie pray for hero partners every day in our morning prayer time. Because we believe in you. Not only for the heroes, but for their families, their health, their blessings, their strength. Because I know they battle too. And, and for all of you who are friends of this ministry, thank you for praying for us and for being in the revival services. We love you and appreciate you so much here at New Life 313.life, New Life 313 International Ministries. We've got some exciting news coming, and we can't wait to share it with you. Until then, I want you to know, because of you, because of your love and your prayers and your financial support, we are rebuilding lives, restoring hope, renewing vision, and no matter what anybody has ever said to you in your life, I'm going to activate this in your life. I'm voice activating you have purpose. God bless.